talk about the world's best, and they're on the water right now. Australia. In the next couple of minutes. When I see that you are both straight and ready, I can see that you like this. Attention. Hamilton Pairs Challenge Cup. Proper international races. Americans on the Berkshire station, Australia Attention. on the Buck station. Go. Off they go then, in the Hambledon. Pairs, oh, well, let's keep an eye on what's going on on the left-hand side of your picture. The Americans lunged out early. I think they've corrected that, they've got that under control. Did that just distract the Australians a bit to the right-hand side? Because there was a bit of convergence of the boats and now the Australians are trying to get themselves back on their side. It seemed like a long time they were sitting at front stop, so the blades squared. And yeah. sometimes with these conditions, you're not actually gripped, and then you miss, and then you just saw the boat drift um, out to Middle River. And the, the kind of American crew, the cow boat, you really have kind of capitalized on that and taken that early advantage. So let's just have a look at uh, in this boat. There hasn't been a seat change in the uh, California Rowing Club boat boat that currently leads this race on the Barcher station. So there's Nikki and Morrison. California. Having a look there, you can see that uh, they're settling into it really well. Hugely experienced, the American boat. Morrison, 30 years old. There's Nikki, 39 years old. And she's competed in three Olympic Games. US Women's Eight. Part of that really dominant uh, women's eight that seemed to win everything. Every time you went to a World Cup or a World Championship for an Olympic Games, you could nail on the American women's eight winning. Yeah, that they're, they're, they're a fantastic kind of, you know, dominance in that event. But obviously Tokyo, it changed. The, the kind of Canadians taking over that mantle now. So but I'm sure they're looking to try and get back in the top spot in that particular event. Megan Musnicki and Jessica Morrison leading the way. It's going to see Jessica racing after she won gold last year in the women's four. Uh, she's a EY colleague, if you want to call it that. Part of our athlete network. Yeah. Yeah, Megan was Nikki winning gold in 2012 in London and in 2016 Whoa. as well. Now keep an eye on this because there's some horrendous uh, issues going on here and they've completely strayed across the water and there's going to be a clash and the umpire's going to have to get involved. What on earth is going on in the Australia boat there? It just went right across the water and they are in fact beyond the Americans on the Berkshire station and that's going to surely finish their race. That was a very costly uh, mishap with their steering. It must have just completely lost S bearing. Something happened there because you don't see a crew divert across the course like that for that long without trying to correct it so i don't know what happened there whether something got stuck or the technical the issue foot got stuck because in these particular boats the individual will be steering with their foot they lose concentration but once again they're going back over so it looks like there's something not right there with the steering foot and the yeah. rudder so perhaps a rudder issue we think because every uh, stroke they seem to be going too far towards the berkshire station now it's given the americans they already had the initiative, but that's surely given them an even greater advantage because that amount of uh, mysteering is going to take so much time out of your race. And especially now they're right behind the crew from Cal Berkeley, so that they're stuck behind them now. Oh, sorry, the American crew, so they're stuck right behind them now. So they're just in their dirty water constantly, which we class dirty water as the puddles from the American spoons being shoveled down into your Australian boat. So it unsettles them, makes it more challenging to row, Especially Nikki, in this boat class. Ms. Nikki and Morrison will have uh, really relished that. Look at, have a look again. They're now trying to get back onto their side of the water. We'll see it again on the uh, slow mo. Just watching. Are they catching a crab here? Let's have a look at the Australian boat. Yep, yeah. there goes the uh, oar in the stroke seat. And that will uh, undo their race. And the recovery, Mark, because it seemed to be more than just that, didn't it? Yeah, so, it, it, and the, once again, they're going across. Something's happened. I don't know if it was from that moment when they caught the crab. Maybe the pitch from the blades changed or something. But that they seem to be really struggling to stay on a straight line. Just talk us through in real detail, then, how they're steering this. Because look, they've still got the problem of 
drifting out to the Berkshire side, and it's uh, obviously there must be some sort of issue here because you don't repeat that three or four times in the same race, do you? So with each of these particular boats, because they're coxless, you'll have someone steering the boat with their foot. Um, it could be the bow person or the stroke person. In this particular case, it is yeah. another program. It's let's have a look. It doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't so, help you, does so anyway, so one of them will be steering it with their foot. Um, and every so often, the, the actual plate that your steering foot goes on can actually come loose. And it's very rare, I guess, in that most coaches check that that's done up. And I've had it before where the whole thing came off and then you can't steer at all. So it may be that. It could be something caught on the rudder. Um, it could be they've hit something, or it could be from that moment of when they call that crab, that something's affected the pitch on the gate, which is affecting the individual actually placing the blade and the way they drive the blade through the water. So there's various things that could be going on here, but I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, you can see them there, Morrison and Ms. Nikki. Uh, it's been a real gain. Mitchell and Gleason finding it very difficult in the Australians that we can see in the picture now. And they'd be super frustrated with that. Like, whatever the issue is, they are not going to be happy with this because that opportunity of having that close race, which I'm sure they were hoping for, is totally gone now. Mark's uh, squinting at the screen, trying to identify who might be doing the steering or if there are any technical yeah, issues. Yeah, it's been the done boat. from the stroke seat, so. Yeah, you've got Gleason on the steering, haven't you, in the stroke yeah. seat. And you can see from that shot, there's a, like a black wire that you can see by their foot, and the, the actual steering wires would go through that and would link into the actual steering post, which is right next to the um, the fin. Uh, here we go again. Mitchell and Gleeson in the Australian boat straying across the water towards the Berkshire side. Pretty untimely moment for things to go wrong technically. Henley Raw Regatta semi-finals day. You're reliant on your kit, aren't you? I remember Mark Hunter in your London 2012 race. You had a, or Zach actually, Zach Purchase had a an issue with his seat, didn't he, in the first 50 yeah, yards we had a, of the race. Yeah, we had a breakage on the seat. And, and you had to restart the race. Yeah, we, so and the a, rules back then, you could put your hand up. That's gone now. Yeah. Uh, and if there was a breakage or something gone wrong... So you then, know about technical issues on the big yeah, stage. That's the point of yeah, racing. Yeah, I think that's also a lesson for athletes to understand the rules of racing, because most athletes probably don't know the rules of racing. Yeah. To actually do your homework, understand the rules is so important, because your coach won't be able to make the decision in the heat of battle you need to understand what is what you can do and what you can't do. So here come the Americans, Musnicki and Morrison. They're going to add to their glowing CV with another Henny Raw Regatta final. All those Olympic moments that they've enjoyed. They're going to have a big race on the water here at Henley tomorrow. Partly, and it, we must remind you that they were winning the race fair and square at yeah. the time of the problems that the Australians incurred anyway, but uh, certainly those steering issues have hugely helped them. It's meant they could uh, cruise the race a bit more, they can uh, be a bit more pedestrian about it, and there'll be more in the tank for tomorrow, I suspect. Yeah, and this is if you're racing them in the final, this is the last thing you want to see is someone exactly. have a nice, comfortable semi when you may not. So, um, yeah, it's, it's worked out really well for them. Um, but it'd be interesting, you know, when the, they're kind of bracing flat out tomorrow in that big final. But yeah, I'm sure they didn't expect it to go as smoothly or as comfortable for them today as this race has panned out. So they drop the stroke rate right down and they can lap up the applause from the very crowded stewards enclosure. Jessica Morrison, Megan Musnicki into the final of the Hambledon Pairs Challenge Cup on the Sunday at Henry Raw Regatta. Partly due to a well-organised start to their race and partly due to some very unfortunate technical issues in the Australian boat. Mitchell and Gleeson, not a race they'll look back on with any fondness at all. No, this is definitely one that you won't want to remember after all the challenges that have been going the steering now. So well done to the Americans. So we've got the 
pair that have had so many problems all the way down, Mitchell and Gleeson, are getting a sporting round of applause from the Stewart enclosure there, an understanding lot, they understand the sport here, and they'll know that uh, they've had everything thrown at them, they've dealt with it as well as they can, but Mitchell and Gleeson in the end, second best to Morrison and Muznicki in the Hambledon semi-final.